It is time for the Writer's Block. I'm Jenny Carlson here in the studios of the Oklahoman, joined by the one, the only, Cedric Golden in the studios of the Austin American Statesman. Hello, buddy. What's going on, Jay Carr? You know, it's uh, there's just so much right now. We've got the World Series going on. We've got, obviously, middle of football. But we're going to start with the NBA, Cedric, because they are off and running, tipped off in the NBA this week, a couple games on Tuesday, a lot more on Wednesday, a couple teams that still have to open on Thursday. But let me just say, I'm disappointed to see you're not in your tuxedo like Paul George <laughs> was the other night. What? Oh, my God. All the opening night craziness in L.A., but... Um, I'm wondering, uh, you know, we've got a couple games now that we've been able to see some teams. Let's talk about who we like this year. Uh, you know, and uh, maybe your your prediction will have changed after what you saw in some of these opening games. But who do you like to win the whole thing this year, Cedric? I know Kawhi Leonard went off against the Lakers, but I'm going to pick the Los Angeles Lakers Ooh. to beat the Clippers in the Western Conference Finals, and then beat the Milwaukee Bucks in the championship series in six games. I think LeBron James and Anthony Davis are, are still top tier talents. They're great. Kyle Kuzma is a superstar in development and they're going to get the right mix from those other guys. It's going to take a little while to get them going together. But I believe when you have two players that are that good and one of them's a big guy and one of them's LeBron James, I know he's 35, 34, 35. He's still LeBron James. They're going to rest him when they can. I think I think this is going to be great. People forget, Jen, when LeBron got hurt last year, he was averaging 27 points and seven assists a game. Well, I mean, that's it. The, the Lakers are going to be fascinating to watch. But And I picked this before the openers. We, uh, we had our preview section that ran in the Wednesday Oklahoma, and we had to do some picks. I picked the Clippers before they played the Lakers to open the season. I'm still liking the Clippers to win it all. Now, I'll tell you, the West is a bear, Cedric. The West <laughs> is going to be tough. It's going to be tough in the regular season. It's going to be tough in the playoffs. And whoever survives it, you know, it might be a situation where the team that survives the West, I think the Clippers will, they may be beat up by the West getting through the playoffs. Uh, I also like the Bucks to get to the finals. But I, I just think the Clippers – you know, you see two amazing offensive talents in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. But then you look at the defense. I mean, some people were talking about that uh, Clippers-Lakers game and asking, are the Lakers, are, is depth the problem? I, they may have a depth problem, but they had a Clippers defense problem on Tuesday night. The Clippers are amazingly gifted defensively, and I think they're only going to get better with Paul George, and I think the offense they can throw out with not only Kawhi and Paul, but then you've got Lou Williams, uh, you know, just a, a bunch of guys that can get 20 on you quick. I like the Clippers, but I do think the West is going to be tough and then it opens up the possibility, you know, I like Giannis to win the MVP, Cedric, but I think the East, if the Bucks can really get going, I think they've got a chance. I mean, do you like you like Giannis in that MVP slot? Who do, who do you like in that MVP area? I like Kawhi Leonard to win the MVP. I just think he's I think I think he's the best two-way player in the game. LeBron James doesn't play defense uh, for the full season anymore. He picks his spots. To, to be a stopper. Uh, Kawhi Leonard is a big-time defender. He's going to be on a team that's going to allow him to be himself. The load won't be too heavy for him with Paul George coming back. Um, you think of Montrez Harrell. That team won 48 games last year, Jen. They're the, they're, they're the only team to ever win that many games well, without an all-star on the team. And now they have two. And and they have a top three coach in Doc Rivers, so yeah. I I don't I don't um, I don't have any problem with people picking the Clippers to win the championship. I'll be surprised if they don't make it to the Western Conference Finals, even though the West is a real minefield this year. I think your team in Oklahoma City is a pretty good team, but I think they may be out in the in the uh, cold looking in. It's going to be them and the Spurs, I think, for that eighth spot. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of good teams that, that aren't going to make it in the West. And, you know, in the East, it looks top-heavy again. You got the Bucks, you got the Sixers, 
you know, maybe the exactly. rebuilt Celtics. I, I do like, uh, you know, I think uh, Kemba Walker's a fantastic talent, and Brad Stevens is always using his wizardry. But, um, you know, Cedric, are there are there other predictions, you know, sleeper teams or uh, teams that are, are picked too high, a coach of the year, six man? Who, what do you have in some of those other areas of prediction that you like? I think, Brook, I think Brooklyn is a kind of a team that people aren't talking about. Kyrie Irving went for 50 he did, yeah. uh, on uh, Wednesday night. I think that that's a team, If I don't know how soon Kevin Durant can come back from that Achilles, but if they're hovering around 500 uh, in April or, you know, in March, late March, and KD's feeling good about things, he may come back earlier than we think. Mm. Another team, Golden State, very intriguing. Steph Curry, we really think Steph Curry's going to play 82 games without getting hurt. I don't. And so if Steph Curry misses 20 games, the Warriors are going to miss the playoffs. Yeah. There's yeah. no Clay Thompson. There's no Kevin Durant. There's no Andre Iguodala. There's no Sean Livingston. Those guys, I mean, those guys left. And so, and Clay's out. So that's a very intriguing team as well. I just think, I just think it's a great, great uh, season. It's the first time in a long time where we really don't know who's going to win. Yep. And that's been cool. It's been Golden State. Uh, it's been Golden State the whole time these last few years. And now we have no idea. That makes for an intriguing season, Jen. Yeah, and even when Golden State didn't necessarily win it, we were sitting at this point in the season for several seasons now believing that they would. And so exactly. the idea that here we sit and we – you know, we don't know. You know, we don't know from about a, a list of eight teams maybe that look capable of being a championship caliber team. You know, I think I think the uh, I think the Sixers are going to be fascinating to watch with the addition of of Al Horford and Tobias Harris and that collection of talent. You know, how good can they be? Brett Brown, the coach of, of the Sixers, I'm wildly fascinated by. He was the coach during the tank. He was he was you know most tank coaches are sacrificial they 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 you know just go through the tank and then once they get good they get a new coach well brett brown's still the coach of the sixers can he go from 10 wins 10 wins one year against the sixers to a championship you know that would be fascinating and then of course the guys down in houston everybody here in oklahoma city would be watching to see what comes of the james harden russell westbrook marriage now that they're where they are in their careers last we saw them they were still so young but you know a lot of people think that's going to be good some people think it's not going to be so good it's all going to be fascinating but cedric what you said about the teams we don't know i think it's really added a lot of intrigue to say who gets there in the end but we know the teams in major league baseball that are there at the <laughs> end we're through two games uh the boys of summer have now become the boys of fall and boy it looks like the washington nationals are the much, much better team than the Houston Astros. Are we in for a possible World Series sweep the way this is looking, Cedric? Well, you said it best when you said fall. This is an epic fall for the Houston Astros. Yeah. Just a week ago, uh, Altuve's taking a raw to Chapman over the wall at Minute May at the Juice Bar, and now they're down two love to the Nationals who don't have Bryce Harper <laughs> on the team. It's crazy. It's crazy. And uh, I was just looking it up. Uh, you know, since they went to the 2-3-2 two, two format, teams that have uh, fallen behind 2-0 in a best of seven World Series, uh, there have been 25. Only three have come back Ooh. to win a World Series. And the last one was in 1996 when the Yankees fell behind 2-0 to the Braves mm. and came back and won four straight. The Houston Astros are entirely capable yeah. of winning four games in a row against anybody, including the Washington Nationals. But here's the caveat, Jen. Here's what just kills me. Here's what I can't believe. They just took out Garrett Cole and Justin Verlander yep. back to back. So you're trying to win four straight after they beat your two best pitchers. Yeah. That's going to be tough. And yeah. you got to win, you got to win, what, four out of the next six games? Yep. And three of them are going to have to be, or at least two of them are going to have to be 
in D.C.? Yeah. Are you kidding me? I can't believe that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a remarkable turn. You're exactly right. You know, I, I do think that the Nationals, you know, they're they're clearly in the driver's seat now. But from what you just said, I, I mean, I am a huge A.J. Hinch fan, the uh, Astros manager. He grew up here in the Oklahoma City area. I think he's a, I think he's a great manager. I think he's one of the best in Major League Baseball, and it's an unbelievable turn after he. His first major league gig out in Arizona did not go well, but he has been nothing but great for the Astros. But, you know, they are really, I mean, they're, they're essentially, uh, you know, trying to go against history. Like you said, Cedric, I think three teams have, have come back from 0-2 in that situation, and it is rare. You just don't see it anymore. You almost wonder if that Nationals-Dodgers series um, a couple weeks back, maybe that was the, the World Series champion decider. And we saw just how close those two teams were. And really since the Nationals have been so dominant, they waited around for, for almost a week for the World Series to start. And usually that causes rust, you know. I mean, a little bit of rust is good, but that much rust, baseball teams aren't used to. You'd think they'd have some rust. Instead, they come out guns blazing and just, I mean, just mowing down the Astros. The best thing the Astros had going for him in game two, Cedric, was Simone Biles before the game. Holy cow, that was about She's as good amazing. as it got for the Astros. I mean, and she threw a strike, and she turned a flip, and she, <laughs> I thought she was going to do like a double back twist in those blue jeans. She is just a freaking amazing. Yeah. And she is, Jen, I met her in Houston during a Super Bowl, the last Super Bowl that was in Houston. Jen, she's 4'7". She's Four eight. Yeah, she's just a little ball of muscle, but she is a giant in her sport, and she is a box office attraction in her in her hometown in Houston. So good for Simone. That was the long bright spot of an otherwise dreary night. They got punked. Yeah, absolutely punked. All those they people. Did, they got the astroed by the Nationals. All those people that were there at the beginning to see Simone Biles throw out the first pitch. Tens of thousands of them were gone by the end of that game. They did not stick around, nor should they have. I mean, that was a total uh, demolition by the Nationals. And, you know, Cedric, last thing I wanted to ask you about this World Series is I've heard a lot of people talking about, you know, the, the Nationals, um, a lot of, uh, you know, big crowds expected in D.C., haven't had a uh, World Series game there since th the 30s, 33. Um, you know, some people are saying, hey, these guys just got a team. A, a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon. Are you in the are you in that uh, are you in that crowd that says, hey, the Nationals just got started. They need to they need to, they need to not win this series because they're so new to it. Or, you know, where do you come down on that? I, I think, you know, Washington, D.C. has been a baseball city historically it wasn't for yes. a lot of years in the recent past but you know a lot of people that have been baseball fans but didn't have a team now they got the nationals where do you come down on all that i'm going to tell you i think dc needs this it hasn't been a great run in dc for the last two years and you know what i'm talking about we're not talking I, about baseball i'm tell you yeah, you know what i'm talking about dc could use some love some unity, a championship. I would hope that the Astros would come back because it's my state. Yeah. And it's the best baseball team in my state. But if DC wins this thing, I think it's a great deal for the area. It might be a great deal for our country. I know there are certain people that live in the district that are going to try and take credit for the Nationals, some blowhards that will go nameless in this re in this taping but i think it's a feel-good story for the city the redskins suck daniel snyder may be the worst owner in all of team sports he's horrible uh the washington wizards slash bullets haven't been good since elvin hayes was there yeah that's 40 years ago jen you know what? Let the, let the Nationals have their day. Yeah. If this is their time to win, let them win. If the Astros aren't as good, pet, uh, shake hands with Washington and say, great job. I think D.C. could use a little bit of good news this fall. So if it happens, I will be happy for the Washington Nationals.
Two things I really like about the Nationals. One, they've got the first guy that they ever drafted as the Nationals is on the roster. Zimmerman, Ryan Zimmerman's his name. And he's still playing. He's still playing a huge part. Got a home run the other night uh, in the first uh, game one of the World Series. So yeah, I like to see stories like that. They've also got a reserve outfielder whose walk-up song is Baby Shark. And you know what? That song, while it's an earworm and it annoys you after a while, it's fun. He did it for his kid so his kid would know he was coming up to bat. That's the sort of thing I can get behind. I love that sort of stuff. So maybe I'm pulling for the Nationals just a little bit, even though I'm a really big A.J. Hinch fan. That won't change, but I do like uh, some, of the, some of the aspects of the Nationals. All right. Now that we've talked uh, some, some NBA, some Major League Baseball, we got to get on to football. And this one, it's just football, 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 Cedric. That's the only thing I can think of. It's a little bit of everything, but let's start with this. The, uh, the New Orleans Saints, obviously their, their record-setting quarterback, Drew Brees, injured, coming back eventually. But Teddy Bridgewater, the question of staying with Bridgewater a little while longer, letting Brees recover, it's a little bit of a conundrum right now for the Saints, isn't it? Yeah, it is because Teddy B has been better than they thought he'd be. Yeah. Five straight wins. They're rolling. They're in first place in the NFC South. And they, even with the Alvin Kamara injury, they're still figuring out ways to win. And so, and they have wins. This, this is not just one of these things where they're fattening up on weaker sisters. They have wins over teams that I think are going to be in the playoffs. Right. They won't at Seattle. They beat the Cowboys at home. So they are a tough-minded bunch. Drew Brees has been practicing. He's been throwing a regulation-sized football for the last couple of weeks, and he's told reporters that he plans to play hmm. on Sunday against the Arizona Cardinals. Here's the thing, Jen. They got a bye week after this week. They've got some momentum. Why not? Don't you think they're good enough to beat the Cardinals without Drew Brees? Yeah. And if you sit Breeze this week, he gets to rest that thumb for another another two weeks. Yeah. Another two weeks. He rests that thumb. He's ready to roll. He gets back acclimated with the ones. I don't think you play Drew Breeze this week. I know he's a competitor. I know him personally. I've been around him. He hates not playing football, and the Saints are rolling. He wants back on the field. But if I'm Sean Payton, I pull my boy aside and I go, look, let's get this last dub with Teddy B. Rest you for two weeks, and then we know you're 100%. Yeah. You don't have to throw next week, but the week after we'll get that thumb ready to go. I don't think they play him this week. Yeah, it's an interesting situation because, you know, if you're if you're in, uh, looking at Breeze's perspective, you know, would it be good to maybe play in an actual game against a team that, you know, maybe they're not going to be your your toughest test to get back on the field that way. But, you know, I think if you're if you're the Saints and you're thinking long term, surely an extra 2 weeks of healing that that bye week is really, to me, the deciding factor that you say, you know what, let's let it heal a little bit longer. I, I mean, he may be fine if they had to play in the playoffs this weekend. Maybe he could go, but if That's you're different. not, That's different. if you're not in the playoffs, if you've got a bye week out there, to me, that just makes sense. Now, can you say that to the future Hall of Famer if he says, "I'm playing"? I mean, to me, this is a setup where, you, you know, you've got a veteran coach in Sean Payton who has a good rapport with Drew Brees. I think if you're the Saints, you got to call on that level of trust and understanding between those two to make the best decision. If you feel like the best decision is waiting and letting it heal a little bit longer, boy, the thing you would hate to have happen is to him to get hit, and then he's out another four weeks, six weeks. I mean, that would just be... If you're the Saints, you'd have your, you know, your your heart in your throat with with something like that happening. But because we all know how important quarterbacks are, that brings us to this question, Cedric. Another guy from your neck of the woods, right now in your neck of the woods, Sam Ellinger. We saw the close call Texas had against Kansas. Kansas, wow. Cedric. Wow. And to me, it was all about Sam Ellinger putting his team on his back and saying, "Come on with me. We're going to win this ball game." 
Sam Ellinger may be the most important player in the Big 12. And I, I don't say that to say he's the best, but for his team, nobody may be more important than Sam Ellinger. In this conference, absolutely. He's what Charlie Brewer to Baylor, yep. same type of thing. I think Sam Ellinger is holding this thing up by almost by himself. Uh, the Texas Longhorns offense has no problems putting points on the board. It's the defense that's the problem. It's historically bad. Ooh. Jen, I'll give you a guess uh, real quick. Last four games, how many yards have the, has the Texas defense given up? Oh, my gosh. Combine the last four games? Yes. I'll go uh, – I'll just round to 2,000. 2,040 yards. Woo! If you're on, if you're on the prices right, you would have won both showcases. You were with hundred dollars of the actual retail price. <laughs> I'd be going to France both. tomorrow. <laughs> a new car, a trip to Bermuda, and some jet skis, Jen. You'd have nice. got all of that stuff. They've given up 2,000 yards, Woo! and defenses are average. I mean, offenses are averaging seven yards a play against Todd Orlando's Woo! defense. Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator is making $1.7 million a year. Wow. I, You know what? I can go out there and give up seven yards a play <laughs> for a lot less money than that, Jen. Uh. I think if Sam Ellinger gets hurt, the Texas Longhorns go kaput. You can say that with a lot of teams. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Hurts not playing for OU would hurt them as well. Yeah. But OU's got a little bit of a pulse on defense. Alex Grinch got that thing going now, and they are they are a legitimate CFP contender. I think they're going to run the table in the Big 12. Texas uh, beset by injuries on defense. Yeah. Caden Stearns is hurt. Uh, Josh Thompson's hurt. B.J. Foster's hurt. They got a lot of guys banged up. And uh, Brandon Jones, their great safeties hurt. They got a lot of guys hurt. They've got to figure out a way to just pull it together, put some guys, some tape, some Robitussin, whatever you need to do. <laughs> to get this win at TCU. Yeah. And then maybe uh, during the, you know, TCU, K-State, then a bye week, maybe they'll be okay after that. Yeah. Uh, but for right now, it's DEFCON 5. They are in a lot of trouble right now. Yeah, and that defense, you know, Cedric, as uh, Texas had its, you know, swoon through the end of the Mac Brown era, the Charlie Strong era, you know, a lot of the issues were quarterback related, you know, not having – a good enough quarterback and not having enough difference makers in the passing game, those sorts of things. You know, the defense, while it wasn't nearly the strength that we saw sort of in the championship type of years, you didn't have those name players, you still felt like the Texas defense could do some damage, and now they're getting damaged. And I know about bad defense. I've seen bad <laughs> defense in my neck of the woods, and 2,000 yards in four games – that is bad defense. So I think it, you know, it, it is shocking. I know part of it is those, you know, it's the injury bug. But, man, I really thought that once Sam Ellinger started to elevate his play, that would really take Texas to the next level. And instead, Cedric, aren't we sitting here saying, is Baylor the best team, in the second best team in the Big 12 to Oklahoma? It sure looks that way right now. I, who would argue? Are you arguing that? Absolutely not. Because when I when I um, went and covered Baylor and Iowa State and Waco, and Baylor beat Iowa State, I had originally thought Iowa State. And we talked about yeah. this in Dallas, Jen. Yeah. I thought Iowa State. We thought Iowa State was the third best team. Baylor wins that, and so I wrote my column was Baylor for the bronze in the Big 12, third best team. I've changed my mind. Right now, Baylor's probably the second best team in the Big 12. Yeah. The numbers don't lie. They're getting stops. They went to Stillwater and punked the mullet. They beat they beat them like they stole something. And then, Jen, that's the same Oklahoma State team that nearly won down here. Yeah. Gave Texas all they could handle in Austin. So I'm telling you, um, Matt Rule has it going yeah. at Baylor. They lost their best linebacker, Clay Johnston, for the season. And they're still getting wins. So I'm telling you, I think... The Baylor Bears are on a run right now. And if you're asking me right now, they are the second best team in the Big 12. Yeah. Now, they get Texas at home. They get Oklahoma at home. Yeah. But the problem for them is they get them back to back. Yeah. That's a tough double right there. If I'm Matt Rule, I'm like, man, if we could just get one, if we can beat one of these teams, yeah. 
we're probably going to be in the Big 12 championship game. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I got to see that Baylor-Oklahoma State game in person like you got to see Baylor and, and Iowa State earlier this year, Cedric. And, you know, I think it uh, – I was – I knew going in, the stats told me this is a team that doesn't beat itself. It's not going to make a bunch of stupid mistakes. And that was a big part of it. But they've also got some some talent. I mean, I, obviously Charlie Brewer knew about him, knew about, uh, you know, uh, Mims at wide receiver, knew about some of those guys. But they, on defense, they can run you down. They don't, uh, they, again, they don't beat themselves. They don't let one mistake roll into another. They're opportunistic when they need to be. We obviously saw three Oklahoma State turnovers, one that was the killer, really turned the tide. But then on offense, they'll run away from you. They had huge plays throughout that game. Um, so I, I think that they're a team that, you know, is maybe, you know, I think they're pretty likely to, even though they do have that Oklahoma-Texas back-to-back uh, set up on their schedule, I like them to be able to get to, uh, to Arlington to the championship game. I think it would be fascinating to see two years after they win one game, Matt Rule's first year, to be in that Big 12 championship game. Would not surprise me at all to see that. Uh, it's going to be fascinating to see how they continue to fare. Uh, I like them, but, you know, Big 12, got some big games coming up. Uh, we'll see how it all shakes down. Obviously, that, the NFL, all the other sports, We'll probably have a World Series champion by the time we get together again oh. next week. So we've got all sorts of stuff coming up next time around. We hope you'll join us then, but thanks for joining us this week.